Singaporeans love their pets, but owning a pet comes with responsibilities that we may not expect. The number of pet owners in Singapore has been increasing over the years and we want to find out exactly how well do Singaporeans know their pets. Today I have Christine, she's a vet from AVS and she's going to follow us on this episode of Poll the People. Hi, my name is Christine. I'm one of the vets working at the Animal and Veterinary Service and Parks. I work on animal health related policies and veterinary pathology. Okay, so now we are with a bunny and we have Aslina and Nuha over here. How has it been like uh, caring for a senior pet actually? I think it's more about not having things that would obstruct her way. Also because she has, she has cataracts, so she gets very nervous. We, we take her to the vet at least uh, twice a year, just yeah. for a general checkup. After we had moved here, we discovered like she had lumps in her chest. Mm. The vet said it was breast cancer, breast cancer and it used to be quite a small lump but it was growing bigger and bigger. I think the best thing that we can recommend is always to just have a closer look at them, do daily health checks at home, keep an eye on how much they are eating, drinking and also how, how frequent they are urinating or defecating just so that if there is anything unusual, you can flag it up quickly and bring, the, bring Bunny to the vet. So for rabbits, I think you probably already know, but they're very prone to dental disease. Yeah. And that's because for rabbits, they're different, their teeth are different from you and I, or even from dogs and cats. They rely on their diet. Yeah. So that's why it's so important for, for rabbits to have diets which are high in roughage, hay, fiber, which helps to wear their teeth down constantly and also keep their mouth in good shape. Yeah, yeah. and it also helps to keep their gut flowing and um, mobile. Now we're here with Ramona and I know that you have two cats. The elder one is called Papadum <laughs> and the younger one is called Delhi. These cats were stray mm. but the parents were actually bred by my daughter's friend. I would like to ask a vet if there is like a Panadol for cats, you know, right. just in case. So the important thing is um, we shouldn't be giving any unauthorised or leftover human medication especially because some of them can be toxic to cats or to animals. So um, that's the important thing to note, to always speak to your vet, to listen to the recommended dosage, frequency, length of treatment because all of that are tailored to that pet's individual needs and diseases. I think it's great that you got both your cats neutered as soon as you got them so one is the risk of having unwanted litters and becoming a grandmother. Yeah. The other health benefit of, about neutering is that um, it reduces the risk of some reproductive problems. And the last one is that um, neutering can also help sometimes to manage some behavioural problems. Mm. For example, especially if they are hormone driven mm. behaviours like caterwauling mm. or like urine spraying yeah, or just any sexual behaviours that might not be desirable. So I'll start off with how you can tell whether your pet is overweight or not at home. You don't have to go to the vet to do this. So the first thing that you want to do is to first look at, at her, at her shape. But when she's at rest, you can be able to see from the top. And from the side, you should also be able to see a nice tucked in waist, which we are having trouble seeing in Papadam's case. The next thing is also to feel um, Papadam's sides. So we should be able... I no, know! She said no! Yeah. <laughs> We should be able to feel her rib cage. We should be able to make out individual ribs and there shouldn't be too much fat covering it. So the next point that you want to look at is actually the tail base where the tail joins the spine. So if you feel around that area, you should be able to feel bony prominences and it shouldn't be jutting out or pointing out. And there shouldn't be too much fat accumulated there. Okay. And lastly, you want to feel her tummy. It should be a nice tucked in tummy and it shouldn't protrude out from behind the ribs. Okay, so right now we are with Sangi and her little Maltese over here. This is Chubby. Chubby, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> so Chubby is a Maltese. He's four years old. Um, so I've had him since he was three months old. Wow. So, and he's our first dog. Okay, so how often does Chubby go for checkups at the vet? Um, at least once a year, um, but sometimes if he, uh, if we just feel like he needs a little bit more attention, we do like twice a year. Yeah. My brother also makes it a point to brush his teeth every time oh. he can. Yeah. 
So I think first things first, it's great that you have a family member at home who's <laughs> brushing Chubby's teeth because just like us, pets are actually susceptible to dental disease as well, including problems with their teeth, their gums. So for pet owners at home, one simple thing that you can do is really try to brush the teeth regularly. So that can be first introducing the toothpaste, the pet safe toothpaste to them. So letting them lick, trying to get them to think that it's a treat so that they associate it with a positive experience and then slowly getting them used to having their fingers in their mouth to touching their gums, their teeth and after that then slowly you put on the um, toothbrush for pets and with a little bit of toothpaste you can try to do circular motions. Have you ever brought him to like a nature reserve? Uh, a nature reserve, not really, but we do bring him to Bishan Park. So, nature reserves actually <laughs> are out of bounds to dogs. Oh. Yeah, so we have four of those nature reserves in Singapore and they are really our precious little areas for biodiversity. Mm. So animals can actually leave a scent in the environment mm. and wild animals can perceive that scent as a threat mm. and that can affect their movement or even their natural behaviour in the wild. Because of the very rustic environment that nature reserves have, there are also a lot of potential health hazards mm. that dogs may encounter when they're there. Yeah. For example, ticks, biting insects or even contaminated soil, water, feces of wild animals which might contain parasites. Hi! Hi Joy! I'm just so distracted by your dog but over here we have Shy with us and she brought along Joy. So uh, this is Joy, she's seven this year. I adopted her when she was two years old so I've had her for five years already. When would you bring Joy to the vet? Uh, when she gets into like little fights with other dogs mm. or um, I guess vaccination. Yeah, but we haven't done that in a while. Yeah, her only vaccination was before she came back home with us. So in terms of the regular veterinary checks, we actually recommend visiting, visiting the vet once every year. This is because there's a higher chance of you detecting something early before it gets too late. So I think one thing to consider is always to consult your vet for more details on a vaccination protocol suited for her lifestyle, your lifestyle as well. And the other important thing to note about vaccination is that it's just one aspect of preventative health care and it goes hand in hand with other things like feeding a complete diet and also um, other like routine parasite treatment as well, mm. which are all part and parcel of giving her the best level of protection against infection. Thank you so much, Shai, for bringing Joy out to meet us today. And thank you, Christine, for joining us for this entire day. I had so much fun meeting everybody's pets. Do you have any last takeaways that you would like to share with everyone? So I think the important thing to know is that welcoming a pet into your family can be a really fun and rewarding experience. But it also comes with a huge responsibility because different pets have very different needs, be it their diet, their environment, and um, what kind of preventative health care they need. But the good news is that owners can take a lot of simple steps to learn how to take care of their pet at home on top of visits, or regular visits with the vet. Thank you so much. All right, and this brings us to the end of Poll the People. Until next time, we'll see you guys again.